It strikes me that the experts who were discussing this are making the crisis worse by inspiring panic with their words, and that the media is piling on with its own hysteria, essentially creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. So much of the market is psychological. It's about confidence. How can anybody have any confidence with the former Fed chairman calling this a financial tsunami? But look, I'm not an economist, so let's bring in the expert, Ali Velshi, CNN senior business correspondent. Ali, what do you think? Are we whipping ourselves into an irrational frenzy? Well, you, you know, Jane, you bring up a really good point. We've really got to try and manage the idea that this is urgent, and particularly with less than two weeks to go to an election, Americans have to understand how urgent it is so they can choose between the two candidates and their economic policies. On the other hand, panic doesn't help anybody. The problem here, Jane, is that there were some of us saying more than a year ago that we were headed to recession, and you had the administration and the federal, the current Fed chair, saying, no, no, it's all good. And then this spring they were saying the same thing. And finally, uh, they acted too late to try and get us out of it. So part of the urgency is understand how serious this is. Take the evasive action. It is a business cycle. We always come out of it. The credit crunch, uh, the credit freeze is melting. The problem we've got to look at, Jane, right now is the fear that Americans continue to lose jobs. Just this week, we've seen more than 8,500 layoffs announced. We've lost 750,000 jobs this year. That's the serious part. You don't have to get a mortgage every week. You don't have to get credit all the time. You do have to work every day. How true is that? True debt, as they say. Yeah. Now, of course, one of the sayings on the street is that the smart money buys in when there's blood on the streets, yep. which is true now. Is smart money buying in? Yeah, and what you're seeing in this market is a, is a combination of days like yesterday where people who were already in the market are rushing to sell out because the market went up a little bit, so they're trying to sell out and the market goes down like it did yesterday. Then today you see the Dow up again because you've got portfolio managers, professional investors saying these, these companies are a steal, let's buy in. And you know what you're going to see? You're going to see this probably for months, but what I, I'm hoping you'll see as the market uh, develops a floor is a slow uptick. But it's still going to be like this, and you got to have a strong stomach for it, or you got to not look at your investments. And how about cherry picking? I mean, look at the price-earnings yeah. ratios yeah. and find those deals in there, and I bet you that's what that smart money is doing. You know, we picking talk about we talk about the market as a monolith, but it's not. It's a bunch of companies, and the stock price, the price of a stock, uh, is a multiple of how much that company earned in a given year divided by the number of stocks out there. So there's actually a calculation out there that says, you know, roughly across the market, it's 15 times what a company earned last year. So that's what the stock price should be. There are a lot of stocks trading way below that. If those companies are healthy and they've got some cash on hand, that's not a bad time to buy. It's also not a bad time to buy into mutual funds where professionals are doing the same thing. Every crash or, or drop that we've seen like this in history has resulted in, in the market returning anywhere from two months to a year later. Of course, you always hear about these 95-year-old ladies who bought $15 worth of stock back in the 30s yep. and never sold it, and now they die, and they're multi-multi-millionaires. Right. And that's because they forgot about it and just withstood the gyrations of the market, yes. and it just eventually went back up. If you're 95 right now, you might think about adjusting your portfolio, but you know, one of these days, Jane, I'm going to bring to you a chart of what the Dow has done over 85 years or 75 years. You can't even see these blips uh, that we're talking about. We think of it as a massive crash. It really is a blip in time. So if you're young enough to withstand this. Honestly, you're just going to give yourself stress by watching this market. What you do need to do is control your debt, control your spending, and, and try and hang on to your job because that's the biggest concern right All now. All right, Allie, this was like a therapy session for me. Thank you so much for My that. Pleasure. Okay. I